Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be doing another Hot Toys review and this time we're going to be reviewing the Hot Toys Iron Man Mark V 2.0 version from Iron Man 2 the diecast version. And as you can see you have a really cool box and as many diecast figures come this one is in foam. And taking our first look at the figure it looks pretty awesome. And then you have this bottom section with all the accessories. And here's our first look at the figure right out of the box. And here's a look at all the accessories that this Iron Man figure comes with. And as you can see, it comes with quite a few. More than you would expect with an Iron Man figure. So starting right off, let's jump into the one of the bigger accessories, the uh, suitcase. So this is just one solid plastic piece. Unfortunately, there's no die cast on this. Kind of disappointing. And it doesn't articulate or open up or do anything. It's just a solid piece pretty much. Now with the new one coming out, the uh, suit up version, that one's going to have a lot more functionality compared to this one. And that is definitely one that I am looking forward to. Either way, despite this not being die cast, it has a very good paint job on it that makes it look like it's made of metal. And I think it does a really good job of pulling that off. If I didn't know any better and I just looked at this, I would think it's made of metal. Uh, but as you can see, there's a lot of fine details. You have a battle damaged arm, which you can exchange with the arm that's already on the figure, just by popping in the shoulder. And you have some really cool battle damage, some denting, some dark streaks, and pieces that are functional. So this moves up just like the arm on the figure does. And you just have a lot of detail. You have the race track suit underneath, which is just sculpted plastic, no materials or anything. And of course you have full articulation with the hand and the elbow as well. I do think it's kind of disappointing and strange that this arc reactor on the hand isn't painted or there's not a see-through piece on that. It makes it look pretty fake. You know, at the very least, I would expect them to paint it a uh, white color or have a clear plastic piece because it kind of just, and doesn't look very realistic like that. Um, strangely enough, this comes off, you know, I just realized that for the first time, this comes off and you can put batteries in there and turn this switch on. That's why there are extra batteries, that makes sense now. And so I guess this could light up so you could actually exchange this hand with a different hand that actually would light up because it had, does have that clear piece. Although I have to say I would have preferred that they would have had a clear piece on the battle damage hand. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense unless it's supposed to be that the arc factor in that hand is off because it's damaged. But if they're going to do that, at least have a clear piece in there so it looks more realistic. So right now it just looks like a solid plastic metal piece. And then you also have a battle damage hand that you can, of course, as you see there, you can exchange with the other battle damage hand and any other hand you want on the figure. And again, they have a solid piece in the middle for the arc reactor, which is strange. I feel like that's not called arc reactor. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, there's a lot of cool battle damage on there. Denting and all that good stuff. Very nice work. You also have chest pieces that you can exchange with the chest pieces on the figure that are battle damaged. And as per usual with these types of pieces, they don't tend to blend well with the rest of the figure because these are the only damaged pieces. So. When this stops abruptly like that, it just looks kind of off. It's some, I wish there was like a better way to do it or maybe have it to where it didn't go all the way and just suddenly stop. That would have been better. And then you have this, which go below the arc reactor on the chest, which exposes a lot of the detailed um, under parts and metallic pieces underneath the inner workings of the suit. No magnets or anything, just snaps on there. You got fine details in there. Not die cast, but it definitely looks like it's made of metal. This Hot Toys is so good at the paint work. And you also have one of the last de battle damage pieces is the shoulder pad, which is plastic. That looks pretty well done. It's got some nice shading and just subtle, intricate scraping and paint chipping on the sides here. And it basically just snaps in on a ball joint on the shoulder, which I'll show later. And then you have just these tools 
screwdriver and tweezers to put the batteries in. Tweezers kind of help, but not much. You have the arc reactor of Whiplash, which I hear and have seen from other reviews is actually less battle damage and has less detail than the one from the 1.0 version, which is kind of disappointing. I don't know why Hot Toys chose to do that. You would think with the 2.0 they would want to have at least consistency and more battle damage or more details, not less details. So that's a little disappointing, but still looks pretty okay. And then you also have, lastly, the head sculpt for Tony Stark, played by Robert Downey Jr. And I think this head sculpt looks really good. This is probably one of my favorite Robert Downey Jr. head sculpts for Iron Man so far. I mean, I don't have many of the other figures, but from the reviews I've seen, this one looks much more like him than the older versions do. You got skin texture, the hair sculpted, looks very well done, looks realistic. You have skin texture that continues on the neck, and the goatee looks fairly realistic, as well as the blood coming down the cheek and on the eye. I think it's all really well done. Definitely think it looks like him. Especially when you have the lighting and the shadows right. And so in terms of the hands for this figure, you get two standard closed fist hands here with the arc reactors off. Arc reactors, repulsor and blast things, I completely figure out what they're called. And then you get the open fisted hands as if he's about to fire. So that's pretty cool. And it makes it a lot easier because you can't really do that with any of the other hands because these are sculpted upwards so you can actually have them look like he's actually holding them up. And they're just stiff pieces, although these are kind of rubbery fingers right here. so. Not sure why they do that, but it's kind of cool. And then what's so cool about the Iron Man figures is you get fully articulated hands, two of them. So that means you can move each of the individual fingers into whatever pose you want. There's a ball joint on the thumb here, and these are just straight uh, hinges for the fingers at each point that you would expect. So that's really cool. So yeah. And there's some interesting like circuitry like detail on the inside when this lights up that's not on the other hand So I don't know why that is. I think it's really cool. It looks really awesome Don't know why it would be there because I mean like I said, it's not on the other one So obviously it's not needed to light up and that wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense. So I do think that's pretty neat if it's like extra detail on the inside then props to Hot Toys for that other than that, if it's a happy mistake, it's still really cool. And lastly, you have the stand, which is just a standard hook stand. Not much to it. And I actually kind of not really that impressed by the stand. The whiplash stand was much better because you had a lot of texture and you had to look like a road. And it wasn't just this flat print. Um, this is just kind of, yeah, it's okay. But I do like the metal nameplate, so that's nice. And here's our first look at the figure in full form with all the lights off. Uh, here's the front and then the side in the back. Alright, so starting off with the masked head sculpt. Um, as you can see, I think it looks really good. You have a nice metallic look to it. And going around to the side, you have slight scrapes and battle damage on the paintwork. Looks pretty good. And moving on down to the chest, you have a ton of intricate details here. You have functional pieces so these flaps actually can articulate to make it look like the suit is still going on now, which is awesome. And these as well on the bottom. And of course you can exchange them for the battle damage pieces. They're a bit tricky sometimes if you push them too far back then they'll start coming off, you have to push them back on. But I do love how Hot Toys has so much intricate details on the inside when you open them up. It just shows how above and beyond they go. And of course you have the arc reactor, with some fine detail work on there. I've seen some other reviews say that it's the 1.0 actually had more paint work on the inside of the arc reactor, which kind of disappointing that they didn't do it for this one. I'm not sure why. Um, with the Iron Man figures, I'm always impressed by how much articulation goes into the suit itself. With the robotic type armor like this, you wouldn't expect that. Um, but they always blow me away with that, with how they do it and how they engineer it. I mean, there's a lot of engineering work that must go into it. Um, so if you're wondering which parts are die cast, it's the shoulder pads here for sure. Those are definitely made of metal. And the only other die cast that I can feel is these pieces right here, this whole leg piece, and then this whole knee piece right here is metal. This is plastic. This feels like metal as well. 
and then continuing on the back you have this which I think this is plastic but this is metal the metal continues around the back of the knee and even the whole joint is made of metal this whole section right here and then these knee joints here on the sides are also made of metal everything else from what I can tell is made of plastic um, I believe there's a metal joint in the uh, foot because I can kind of just feel it by the way it moves and how uh, kind of stiff it is so going back up to where the chest is you have a lot of just individual segments um, that are separate but they're a tight fit so they don't move around too much like the quarter scale iron man these i would i thought they were going to be one solid piece but they're not and what you can do you can actually move this up so you can have more articulation which is pretty amazing and this is there's a spring on this so you can actually move it around even more so I find that to be awesome. And I just realized this top part pops up and this bottom part. So that gives you a ton of room. But not getting into articulation yet, just showing the functionality. And then if you go around, you see that the details continue on the side. All this intricate work. I'm disappointed that these weren't die cast. I would, that's what I was hoping for the most. And then you go around the back, you have like the spinal uh, armor there and just a ton of details all along the back. You have these flaps that are able to move up and articulate. They articulate in two different areas, right here and right here. So you can uh, push them pretty far out and you have details on the underside of them as well. And inner workings underneath them. And then you also have these two flaps on the top that can also articulate up. And you have details on those smaller flaps as well on the inside. Yeah, I'm just impressed by how many inner working details and just intricacies this figure has. You know, you have like the gears where the shoulders are, you have all of these rivets and pieces that connected the armor together when it was going on him and it just looks like it's made of metal the paint is just so well done um, even though it's not die cast it definitely looks like it is and it continues down on the forearm this is all the different layers and the hands these two hands are just standard fist hands which don't light up because they're supposed to be off now this part right here is actually made of rubber you can feel it by the material um, it's just these two segments right here, and I think it's to give it more flexibility in the neck. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. But it's pretty cool. It's like a mixed media type thing. And then continuing down, you have more details on the back of the legs. Just details that look like they beat under underneath the armor, which I think is awesome. And I continue. And just have standard armor pieces. It looks like magnets on the bottom of the feet here, which is strange. I was expecting it to be like repulsor circle things. I cannot remember the name of that for the life of me. Um, so that's kind of weird. And there's actually screws in here. I wonder why that is. Maybe unless it's the die cast continuing from the leg. Maybe this whole inside structure is made of metal. I have no idea. But yeah, you can see more, just more layer details on the back here to make it look like it's you know, like folded out over him, just like in the movie. Um, what's really cool about these, as you may already know, is each of these folds out individually so that you can get the look he has when the armor is first going on him. And that is just a detail that just blows me away. Uh, how much intricacy went into the engineering of this. The fact that you can just articulate each of these out is really awesome. Kind of have to mess with it a little bit to get it to look right to get them all even evenly done and make it look like it's a sequence that's happening yeah i think that looks really awesome the only disappointment is i wish there was more metallic on the inside i don't know if that's accurate to the movie the black paint they have on it but i think the metallic would look really cool and of course you have more inner working details on the inside here underneath those and of course this happens you can do this on both legs so you can have that full look that he has when the armor is going on him in the movie. Some of them are a bit tricky to get out. But once you have it, it goes out pretty smoothly.
So you're probably wondering where all the batteries go. You'll find out when you get the figure or you can find out right now. So you take, for the head, you take this part off with a magnet. It's a magnet right there. And as you can see, there's a screw. So you just put the batteries in the top part of the head. You turn the switch on and you have the light up feature. Now for the chest, it's just as you'd expect on the back. You take this piece off right here and there's a screw and you put the batteries in this compartment and then you turn this switch on right here and you get the arc reactor. For the arms, they're sometimes tricky to get off. You uh, basically pop these forearm pieces off. You have the screw and then you put the batteries in here. You turn the light on, which you can't see because I don't have the right don't have the right hand on it, so let me get that. But as you can see when you have it on, you have a ball joint uh, type thing going on there. Since the hands are clear, the light shines through them just like so. And the same thing for this one. And so then you have Iron Man all lit up. And that to me is what really sells this figure. Um, when all the light up features are activated, it just really looks much more realistic. That's what really sells it for me. It just blows me away. Now, unfortunately, some of these batteries start going dim after a while, pretty slowly, so you might wanna replace them. For some reason, my arc reactor on the chest, it flickers when I move the stomach and chest area, so maybe it's a wire or something, who knows. Um, so yeah, moving on to the articulation. So the head can move forward this far, and it can move back that far, and side to side, 360. So you can have them looking at all sorts of different angles. Now the shoulder pads are pretty fixed, but you can kind of move them side to side like that. Of course you can pop them off to replace with the battle damage versions. Um, so the shoulders can move up pretty far, like about that far, which is unexpected for this type of figure. And then of course you can you have to readjust this now. And then you can move them forward about this far. And back. You can basically move them 360 if you're careful enough. And then the elbows. You can move them pretty far since this part is articulated, this type of armor right here, which you could also use to make it look like the armor is going on them for the first time. And back, just at a straight angle, and you can just slide that back in place. Of course the chest, which I showed earlier, you can, can move that quite a bit. So you can move it forward, about that far and back, about that far. And when you pop this joint out in the stomach, in the chest, you can move it farther and farther back. And then of course you can twist. Since all these pieces are movable, you can actually twist it pretty far. And then you just pop it back in place. You can move the leg forward pretty far since these pieces are articulated. And you can move it back fairly decently since there's a spring on this. And then the knees you can move them. They're ratcheted and pretty sturdy since there's a die cast piece, I believe, that's making up the joint. And the knee pad is separate, so you get the inner workings whenever you do that. You can move pretty far back and then just a straight angle forward. Now, in terms of the feet, can actually move the front part of the foot forward pretty far because there's like a spring on this front part that moves and these flaps also move as well which is really cool and you can move the foot back that far and forward that far side to side pretty stiff joint and that's about all the articulation for the figure so you're probably wondering what the unmasked head sculpt looks like. So let's check that out. And here we have the unmasked Tony Stark head sculpt on the Iron Man body. And I think this looks really cool. Um, it's a nice added bonus for this figure. And I think it definitely looks very realistic.
And with the unmasked head sculpt, the articulation, there's none in the neck, but you can move the head down about that far, back about that far, side to side, at an angle, and of course 360. So yeah, you can do pretty much a lot of different things with this figure. Now let's check out those battle damage pieces. So for the battle damage pieces, you would basically take this front part off on the arc reactor, you would pop these off, and then you just replace them side. And then you put this one here. And then lastly you pop in the arc reactor piece and you have the battle damage look. Of course, the next step would be to replace the shoulder pad. You have this battle damage shoulder pad for this side. You want to be careful in popping this off not to break it. As you can see, it's connected by a ball joint. Alright, so you just carefully take it off. And then you align the ball joints and pop the battle damage one on. So with much trouble, I finally got this battle damage uh, shoulder armor on. So pro tip, you just it's much easier just to pop this arm off out of this uh, gear socket right here. It's a ball joint. And you just pop it back in. Much easier than trying to pop this on the shoulder pad on when you have it already in the figure. So then I'm gonna do that with this arm to get the battle damage arm on there. So you just just pop this arm off out of the ball socket. And then you take this battle damage arm and you pop it in the ball socket right there. And there you have the battle damaged Iron Man look. With all the different chest pieces, the armor pieces, uh, the shoulder pad pieces and the arm and you can have them fighting whiplash with battle damage now i like i said before i wish the battle damage had blended in better on the chest piece if only these were replaceable or something like that or maybe the whole piece but then i get but that would be difficult because you have all these articulated pieces right here so maybe but this one's not articulated so maybe it could have worked if they just continued it and had this or you could replace this as part of this as well that would have been awesome, but you know, you get what you get, and so let's check it out with the helmeted head sculpt. And there you have the full battle damage look with the mask head sculpt. And me personally, I just prefer the clean look because, uh, like I said, like I think. These pieces blend well, and this blends well, but when you get to just the, these two, then they stop suddenly, it just looks off, so I probably, if I'm going to do this look, I probably just have these two bottom pieces on the, on below the arc reactor, and then the arm, and that's probably it, because, yeah, I just don't know about the other ones, they don't blend as well as they could, but then I get how it's difficult, and probably more expensive if they did like a whole other arm, and then It'd be complicated to do all this, but like I said, if they could just make this part removable and then blend it in better, that would be awesome. All right, so in terms of my overall thoughts about this figure, um, I have to say this is uh, this is a tough one. I want to say this is one of my favorite Hot Toys figures, uh, favorite Hot Toys Iron Man figures in my collection right now. You know, and that's really hard to say because I love that quarter scale Iron Man Mark III figure. Check out that review on my channel. Um, I love that one because the size, of course, and the fact that it has so much uh, working and functional pieces on different parts of the armor that you wouldn't expect and that you probably wouldn't get with most other figures um, blows me away. And the fact that it's quarter scale. If this was quarter scale, it would probably be my favorite Hot Toys Iron Man figure in my collection. But it's hard to compare this to the quarter scale Iron Man figure that I have right now. So, you know, just if I really want to go off on how I feel about this, I, I do probably think this is my favorite Hot Toys Iron Man figure right now in my collection of all time. I don't know. That's a hard decision to make. There's so many different Iron Mans out there with Hot Toys. It's hard. Um, and I don't have, these are the only ones I have right now. So I will say this though, in terms of the positives, jumping into those, definitely love the die cast pieces. Do I wish there were more die cast pieces? Yes. And that is a negative. Uh, you know, when, when a figure says die cast on it and it's a 2.0, you really expect there to be far more die cast pieces, you know, not just on two different areas of the whole uh, body armor, you know, not just on the shoulder pads and, and the part of the legs, but you really expect it to be a fair amount of the figure. And so, and, and you know, it can be done because I mean, 
modern technology and all that stuff. I mean, we know they've done it with other Hot Toys figures where they've had more die cast pieces, at least from what I hear. Um, as far as I understand from what I hear, this probably has the least amount of die cast on it compared to other Hot Toys figures. I don't know how true that is. That's what I think. That's what I've heard. So you tell me. Um, so yeah, that's that's a big negative for me is I really wish there was more die cast on this figure, especially if it's going to advertise itself as a die cast on the box and everything. You know, and I'm, if I'm going to spend that kind of money too, I really expect there to be more die cast. Um, and that would really make this figure even way better. It's already really cool and it looks like it's made of metal. So going back to positives, this figure looks amazing. I mean, just the look of it blows me away. It may not be my favorite two colors of the Iron Man collection, but just the way that it looks like it's uh, came from a suitcase, the way that it looks Transformer-like, like that it folded out onto him and it has all of those rivets and just pieces and the way it's sculpted to look like it's folded out onto his arms and legs and chest and back and all that. I think that's really cool and the fact that they added extra articulation in some some of those pieces that are supposed to be folding onto him is even better. Just going above and beyond, you know, like the fold out chest pieces and the fold out pieces on the legs, which are the coolest part pieces of articulation of any Hot Toys figure that I've seen because of how intricate it is. And the articulation of this figure is, is really well done, not something you would expect. I wouldn't expect a robotic armor-like character like this to have so much articulation in an action figure form, but this one does, just like the Iron Man Mark III quarter scale one I have. I am impressed by that. I'm really impressed about how many pieces move on this figure, considering that it's six scale too, and how small it is. It's amazing the engineering work. You really have to, even if you don't like this character or this particular figure, you have to really hand it to Hot Toys and be impressed by how much engineering and careful just design work went into making the different parts on this figure be able to articulate because there are so many moving pieces on this figure that you wouldn't expect and you have to really think about how difficult it is to engineer that put it together and make it to where it's not so fragile that it breaks you know which yeah it's just really cool and you don't see that with any other collectible that i'm aware of at least so i think that's awesome and another positive of course is the light up features the negative of the light up features is the batteries aren't always the best so the lights at least right now, they seem to be going dim already for me. I've only had it for like a week. So yeah, you might want to maybe replacing the batteries might work or modding it up with some wire work and stuff. Uh, I'm kind of surprised I didn't do a USB thing since they're switching to that now for new figures. If it's a 2.0, that would have been a really cool thing to change. Um, other positives, I like how it comes with some interchangeable pieces um, with the battle damage parts and the unmasked head sculpt. The unmasked head sculpt is a huge positive. I think it definitely looks like Robert Downey Jr. I think it's very well done, well painted, has the skin texture. I love how it has that scar with the uh, blood coming out. That's a really cool feature. Negative of the battle damage pieces is that they don't blend in very well. At least two of them don't. So that bothers me. It makes me not want to use those two pieces. I wish there is a better way to make them blend better, maybe with more interchangeable parts. I think this is a standout figure, at least in my collection it is, compared to my other ones. You know, it's weird because I was actually not, plan I was on the fence about getting this figure because I'm not like the bit, like Iron Man isn't my number one character that I, that's my favorite. My favorite character is Spider-Man. I don't know, it's hard to say. Iron Man's not like a, it's not like my top, I don't know, I mean, maybe my top three, but, but it's not like a, it's the price point of these Iron Man figures is so expensive for one. And for two, there's so many different Iron Man suits out there. They all, it's not like they blend together, but I feel like, do I need to get all of them? No, I don't feel like I do. I feel like if I have one or two or three, that's good enough. Like my favorite ones. Because then it gets kind of repetitive after a while. At least for me. And so picking up this one, you know, and it wasn't my favorite design necessarily. I just think it was a really cool idea of how the suitcase folded out onto them. It's not my favorite color design necessarily, but I do think it looks cool. And having it in person, I am very impressed by the way it looks. So I am thankful that I got it and that I ended up getting this figure after all, even though I was planning on maybe not getting it. I was really on the fence, but yeah, I think it was just for those reasons. Iron Man is my favorite character of all time, and there's just so many out there. It's, you know, you have one and you feel like you have them all, kind of, even though that's not really true because they all do look different, but at least for me, I don't feel like I have to have every Iron Man figure, and they're not all my favorite. Like, my favorite costumes are really the... Iron Man 1 and 2, and then past that, I kind of lose interest in the designs. That's just me. So I'm probably not going to get too many other Iron Man figures. Probably just the classic early ones from Iron Man 1 and 2. 
So yeah, this one was definitely one I got, and I had Whiplash, so I figured, you know, it's probably good to get. And I'm definitely going to try to get that uh, suit-up armor look one that's coming out, hopefully in the next few months. Because I think that one's just really impressive with the way it looks. I don't regret getting this figure. I, I think it looks really awesome. I wish there was more die cast, kind of disappointing, but still looks really cool. And just, yeah, just kind of blown away by that. So yeah, I would highly recommend this figure. I think if you like this um, suit, and if you missed out on it before, and now you got a chance with the 2.0, and you're on the fence and you're like, I don't know. I say if you missed out on the other one you regret it, then get this 2.0 version because I think it's awesome. Let me know what your opinion is. I want to hear it. Let me know in the comments below. And until the next video.